Hey everyone, it's Aaron, and welcome back to Sheep Wax Chronicles. And today we're going to be taking a look at uh, a set I talked about a little bit uh, in a previous video 1990 Upper Deck Baseball. Uh, obviously, we won't be breaking this entire case today, but we will break open a couple of packs and we'll talk a little bit about this set. Uh, before we get going with that, though, I want to talk about a little bit of history. Um, if you uh, go back to the card I'm pointing to right here, you'll go back to the 1991 Donruss video where I talk a little bit about Upper Deck and how they sort of jump started the hobby a little bit into uh, being a little more innovative and collector friendly. And in fact, you can tell on the Upper Deck box, they uh, call themselves the Collector's Choice, uh, which is actually a uh, set they put out in the 1990s. Uh, I think 94 was the first year of it, uh, as an entry level set to compete with uh, Donruss and some of the other main, the mainline sets in that uh, in that era. Um, this being the 10th edition, this is the low number uh, box. Uh, the high number box, which basically just also includes uh, cards 701 through 800, um, also was the first upper deck product to include baseball heroes. And that was a Reggie Jackson autograph, and that uh, is an extremely hard product to get a hold of in a wax, in a, in a box setting. Uh, I was able to pick this up at uh, Three Star Sports Cards in Bloomington uh, for about ten bucks. So I uh, shout out to them for having this in stock. And uh, without further ado, let's get back into some of these cards. Um, you can tell that there is actually f uh, some cello wrapping on this uh, packaging. This is something that Upper Deck sort of pioneered, and you'll actually see Donruss and Tops and Fleer and Score copy that in 1991 and on, going into their boxes. Just guarantee that you haven't been uh, getting a box of cards that hasn't been sorted through. And as you can see, it's a nice uh, foil pack. Um, very much tamper-proof. That was one of the biggest things with uh, Upper Deck, is they want to be tamper-proof. And show that it was a... Uh, uh, a legit sterile product once you got it into your hands because with wax it was relatively easy to op break open a pack, look through the cards, and then seal the pack back up if you really didn't find anything you wanted. Um, it's just a you know a way to keep unscrupulous people from pulling the uh, the rare rookies and making sure that everybody got a fair shot at getting the uh, the rookies in the set. Of course, I don't think in the ninety set there were that many rookies. Um, other than Frank Thomas, I don't think there were many rookies, and I don't think there's a Thomas in this set. Um, yeah, so let's open up one of these packs and we'll start getting into more of the 90 Upper Deck stuff. So one of the big things that Upper Deck had going for them is they were really hard up about making sure that you knew that they were a collector-friendly product. Uh, every one of their cards includes a little hologram with the Upper Deck logo in it, and that was, you can see the reflection there of the actual logo. And that was to guarantee that you were getting a legitimate card and it wasn't a reprint, because it was pretty hard to get those holograms in there. Um, Ultra Pro actually, uh, the, the uh, supply maker actually a couple years later did uh, some packet and cards really put the Ultra Pro logo on the cards too. And uh, eventually, most of the other card makers also included some sort of uh, um, some sort of uh, anti counterfeiting measures. I believe Score did the uh, the barcode, and uh, Donners did some watermarking. Tori Lovulo, huh? Of course, the, uh, the uh, statistics line manager for the Red Sox and the, uh, um, the D-backs, Harold Baines, Mookie Wilson, Jimmy Key, Barry Bonds, that's a good card, so we'll hold that aside, Dan Pasquid, Todd Seal, Nolan Ryan's are going. And then, here's the cream of the crop when it comes to premium pack-ins for cards, the hologram stickers. There's the Old school California Angels look. Look at that. That's actually a, a really cool 3D hologram. Um, this is what Upper Deck did as their pack in um, when Donruss and Fleer came on the scene in 1981. They both launched their card sets with Bubblegum and then Tops immediately uh, brought a lawsuit against both those companies for packing in gum with their baseball cards and 
really just making baseball cards in general, they didn't like that very much, but they especially objected to the whole bubble gum because that was sort of their trademark, and courts eventually agreed, so what uh, Donners did in the 2 is they switched to uh, um, the puzzle pieces, and then Fleer also did some stickers. Uh, score, for a while, was doing, they uh, had acquired the Sportflex brand and IP, and were doing uh, lenticular cards in their, in their sets, and then uh, Upper Deck did the holograms, and I think those are my favorite ones, actually. So we got uh, Dave Dravecki, um, really interesting story behind him. He actually ended up uh, coming back from an arm injury, and then on his return to the mound, actually ended up causing such a severe injury to his arm, he actually had to end up like amputating it. It was a really kind of a sad thing. Uh, Jamie Moyer, who, believe it or not, actually pitched until 2002 or three, I think. Rick Sutcliffe. Um, Tony Phillips. I'm used to seeing him in a Tiger uniform, actually. And then you have a checklist and some of their art cards. So, there you go. I don't recognize that off the top of my head. Is that going to be Baju? Mike Scott. That's a name I don't hear very often. Outside of the office, of course. Um, so, this is basically Upper Deck's companion piece to the Diamond King set that uh, Donruss was doing. And then uh, Fleer, I forget what their subset was. And Top sort of avoided it, but they did this. And that was the, so the art cards were all the team checklists. So you can see there's all your Astros right there. Okay, pack two. Right away, you got a couple of, uh, I got a nice little twin there. Who do we have here? German Gonzalez. I actually don't know too much about him. Jeffrey Leonard. There's a really funny clip on YouTube, and I'll have to see if I can come up with it. But basically, when he was playing with uh, the Giants, uh, the announcer said that he was up and basically said as soon as he hits into a double play, they would go to the commercial break, and that's exactly what he did. The Magnificent Seven are warming up in the bullpen and will be with you as soon as Leonard hits into a 6-4-3. So I'll have to see if I can dig that up and place it in the video here. Uh, Luis Rivera, Nick Osaski, and those are guys I remember seeing from the 87, 88, 89 sets too. Felix Jose, Larry Sheets. Hensley Mules. <laughs> this is like the ultimate nineties card. It's just a random and he was supposed to he was supposed to be a pretty hot rookie, but he ended up uh flaming out pretty early. Uh Yankees were really big about that in the uh the early nineties had a lot of those guys like Kevin Moss and uh, Brian Taylor who actually never even reached the major leagues because uh, he got into a fist fight, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Another uh hologram. Not a whole lot to those ones. They came out with different designs every year. So uh, the, the the low numbers in this year had the mini ones. I think the high numbers had full size ones, and then they had like little orbs in the ninety ones that made it look pretty cool. Greg Matthews, Steve Rosian, Fred McGriff, the Crime Dog. We'll set him aside. Mitch Webster, who actually ended up catching for the Twins for a little bit. Um, Another art card of Barry Larkin and the Cincinnati Reds checklist. And then Kevin Tappany, star rookie, who I actually just got his autograph in the mail in a trade today. Let's see if I have that here. As a quick little aside, so this is from uh, Topps Archives 19, 2019. Kevin Tappany autograph. But you can see I took the 92 Topps design and made that. But that's a pretty cool card. All right. Sorry about that little aside. I just wanted to show that off. We're going to get back to the set here. I'm going to keep that Tappany card aside. And Charles Hudson. Pack three. Look how tough this foil is. This is, you can see that the way it's perforated and sealed. I mean, there's really no way to get into that pack without somebody noticing. That was really sort of their big thing. <clears throat> Tom Bolton. Doyle Alexander. Rob Ducey. A lot of Blue Jays. Mike Finnegan. 
Gary Templeton. That's a other 80s, late 80s, early 90s name for sure. Dennis Powell. Tim Belcher. Another Hensley <laughs> Oh man, those guys. Our, foil, our hologram there is a nice little Tiger's logo. And look at the way the uh, Tiger pops out of that. That's pretty nifty. I always like these a lot. It's so gimmicky and so dumb, but 12-year-old me was amused by it, and I guess so is 4-year-old me. Greg Litton, Jose Guzman, Mike Harkey. I used to always pull Jose Guzman and get really excited because I always thought it was either Juan Gonzalez or uh, Juan Guzman who played pitch for the Blue Jays in the late 90s or mid-90s. And then there's another star rookie of Kevin Ritz. And Neil Heaton who played with the Twins for a little bit and was actually drafted by the Twins. And Randy Kramer. So we've seen two of the subsets out of this uh, series. Uh, we've seen star rookies here. And then we've seen the team checklist. Um, I don't think their presence in the 90s, in the 1990 set, but in 1991, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Upper Deck also had the Diamond Skills. And those were sort of their, their highlights uh, where they would, you know, point out like no hitters, uh, milestone records, that type of thing. Greg Walker, there's Pegs. Pegs is a pod. So I believe. Yeah, so he was only with the pods for half season because in 90 and 91 he was with the Twins because he was with the Twins for that uh, big uh, series run in 91 and stuck around until 93 94. Dennis Oil Can Boyd, look at those glasses, man. That is a hardcore stud. Uh, you got Eddie Williams. Mike Gallego, oh there are a bunch of classic names in here, Mike Witt, another Tim Belcher, you can see Collation was maybe not their strong suit this year. Anybody a big fan of the Amazons, look at that, uh, the way the, uh, the bridge pops out of that, that's pretty cool. Mark Gubiza, Dan, Don Robinson, Junior Felix, Rick Honeycutt and Rick Honeycutt, the story about him uh, when he got caught for Groover her for cutting his pitches is really hilarious if you haven't heard it. Uh, Brian Fisher, Willie Fraser, Guillermo Hernandez, and then we'll move on to pack five. Now, one thing you notice in these sets too is a lot of the players there's not a whole lot of like originality in player names and it's not the fault of the players themselves I mean you know they didn't name themselves but if you take a look at like uh, well you know you have like your Madisons and your Dakotas and you have you know Chance uh, Chancisco and you have you know a lot of a lot of guys now that have sort of you know oddball names a little bit uh, but then there were guys in the 80s, there actually are in this set two, there's a Ron Robinson and a Don Robinson, and there's a two Greg Harrises. There's a Greg A. Harris and a Greg W. Harris. There's Willie Wilson, Dave Gallagher, John Cerruti, Larry Walker. That's a really good card. I believe this is a second year card. Or, yeah, well, that's a rookie, is it? Have that one set aside. Brady Anderson, who owes his entire career to PEDs and one season where he belted out, what was it, 50 some home runs? That's a second year card for Brady Anderson. Sean Dunstan, you see a lot of him in the 90s cards too. And he was actually pretty good back in the day. He didn't play for a long time, but he was a, he was a good but not great grinder. Uh, Greg Kettere. Another Mike Witt, Raymond Martinez, and then we have the Red Sox. Look at those cool. I just I can't get over. It. I mean, it looks like you just like reach in and pick those socks. Oh, that logo. Bow nose baseball. Keep that one set aside. Jerry Royce. Another art card. 
I believe that one is uh, Avery Smoltz. See, that shows who I know, and J. Bell. I'm going to pick six now. I gotta keep track of these things. Wrappers off to the side. Chet Lemon. Lou Whitaker. A couple of great Tigers right there. Lou Whitaker was a. Uh, I think he was pretty underrated. Todd Worrell. John Costello. Spike Owen. Ron Gant. I'll put a put him aside with my uh, Herbeck. Franklin Stubbs. Greg Cattery again. Lance Parrish, who we saw it like several times in the uh, the ninety one Donruss set. Little Seattle M's. That one just a little bit of movement on the uh, the uh, the word mark there. Jack Doherty. Craig Biggio. This is a second year card. I thought this was a first year card. Never mind. That's still a good card though. Bro Schroeder. Another art card. And that one is. What is that one? That's not Joe Carter. George Bell. Greg Minton and Frank Tanana. George Bell, who ended up playing for the Cubs and then got traded to the White Sox across town trade. And I think this might be the last car we open in this series. Seven. Carlos Martinez, Brett Sabrehagen. Kevin Gross. Pascual Perez, another former twin. Storm Davis. Even like the nicknames back then were dead. Storm. Omar Vizquel, that guy was a superstar. I love Omar Vizquel. I think that, you know, well, is that a rookie for him? Interesting. Yeah, I think playing in the era of uh, Ozzy Smith really caused him to be overshadowed because he was a really, a really good infielder for a lot of years. And uh, I think he was sort of like an old rookie. He was really underrated at his position. Franklin Stubbs again. Uh, Eric Ketzel, Pete Smith, Julio Franco, another guy who played late 95 years in the league, Ron Jones, your uh, Ranger checklist, and I believe that that is Julio Franco. I would not have guessed that from that picture. Tim Burke. I have one more pack. Can't go wrong with these. I mean, it's just so much fun to open these old cards, right? Roberto Alomar. I'm glad we opened this one. Let's start with a couple pods there. A couple of legendary pods. We got Roberto Alomar, Benito Santiago, Terry Pendleton, Tommy Herr with the Phillies. Um, funny story about Tommy Herr is that he actually played for the Cardinals in 87. And um, he ended up being one of the reasons why the Twins fought so hard to get the series win. So the Twins traded for him, and he was so miserable, he said he didn't want to play here, and they ended up having to trade with him away again after a year. Derek Lilliquist, Chris Basio, uh, Jeff Robinson, Tony Castillo, John Orton, Gary Milkey, Kevin Apier, which is a rookie. Chris Wilkerson, Julio Machado, star rookie, and Bob McClure and Greg Brock. I can't believe we haven't really seen that many twins in here. Um, we'll have to check out what that assortment is a little bit later. And then these last two, another Anaheim Angels, Anaheim California Angels. And then we've seen that Seattle one before. And then the San Diego Padres. Let's see if we can catch this one in the light. Not a whole lot to that one, but even though oh, that still moves quite a bit, doesn't it? Well, and that's about all we got for this break. Um, 
I don't know, this is actually a pretty interesting set, and I liked that the upper decks were a little bit more high quality than the other cards that came out this time. Um, if you open up a, a pack of like 90 tops or something like that, or you know, mid 80s cards, um, if you didn't pull cards that were all from one sheet, they would be cut all sort of like, you know, haphazardly. Some of them would have diagonal cuts. They wouldn't be cut to a specific size. But you can tell, I mean, if you look at these, they're all uniform size. You know, you can run your finger across them. They're nice and smooth. Um, and then you have these nice crisp white borders, which nobody did at the time. And then you have the full color on photo on front with that full color photo on the back. And they really went all out to do these action photos on the back. And these are, these are gorgeous cards for the time. And they were just light years ahead of everybody else. And this is really what sort of jumpstarted the hobby and like getting into, you know, making better cards, if not less cards at the time. Because, I mean, obviously, 10 bucks for a box, you can still find plenty of any upper decks around. But that's about all I got for this round. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please stick around, and we got plenty more content coming up. I uh, have a, uh, a great idea that was given to me about uh, doing a comparison video uh, from uh, Cheap Wax and then uh, how things look with the mainline sets in the current day. So I'll be doing that a little bit later on, and then I will also am going to discuss some mid-90s sets as well. Uh, so if you want to keep on seeing these videos, go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button. Make sure the bell is rung so you can get notifications. Please leave me a comment in the uh, section and make sure to like this video. Um, otherwise, hope you guys have a fantastic night, and I will catch you on the flip side. Support your local card shop.